Now it's time for the Ashley After Show. It's the Ashley, Ashley After Show. Hey, David. Do I have to call Keckner. you David? You I call know. You call me champ. The Keck. Nice. <laughs> David Keckner. This is a huge de- deal. Welcome to the Ashley After Show. I'm joined by David Keckner. Also known as Champ from Anchorman. Hello, Anchorman 2 coming out. Hello, have you ever seen Anchorman? Come Hello, on. it's the best movie ever. Let's just put that out there. Uh, our girl Sky, our news girl, was Champ. We were all Anchorman for Halloween, and, and our year? girl Sky was Champ. Oh, I've got to see the picture. It was outstanding. She That's nailed awesome. it. Yeah, she had your whole swag and the cowboy hat on and everything. But he was just talking about how he met his wife off air, and I'm mm-hmm. like, you're going to tell that on the after show. And he was like, ah. No, I can. I, can. <laughs> I, can. I just... I, I think it's really cool that you met her in an airport. Right. And I'm I'm fascinated to know how that even happens. My intern is taking off his jacket right now. It's very distracting. Sorry, sorry. Andy. Okay, just sit down, sorry. Andy. Sit down. Just sit. Okay, you're fine. Okay. I'm I very, love how Andy got in trouble halfway through the interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not even halfway through. Well, because right I'm ADD, yeah. so like I have like a million questions I want to ask you. Right. I have a time crunch, and like all I could hear was the crinkling of the jacket because gotcha. I'm ADD. I'm My like, wife something has shiny. That. Do you something have a thing shiny. With, <laughs> do you have a thing with noises? Well, I'm just ADD, so yeah, anything shiny. So it could be a oh. noise, a distraction. If I see something shiny, I mean. My wife will not let me crack and eat pistachio nuts in her vicinity. It bothers her so much. Really? Yeah, like there's some of the crack, the pop. You know what? I do have a noise thing. If yeah. people chew loudly in a quiet room, it bugs me crazy. It drives you crazy. And yeah, like I have with chalkboard, like nails on a chalkboard, it literally right. drives me crazy, yeah. like certain sounds. Yeah. It's really so weird. So uh, she checked with the doctor. That's a real thing. It is. Yeah. Don't know what the name of it is. I got a lot of things going on. Right. We can add that to the list. Okay, we can add that to the list. Anyways, I just think it's awesome that you met your wife in an airport. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that even happen? Like, that's like a love story. Right. Like, I think I saw that in Sleepless in Seattle or something. <laughs> that's really... I know, it is kind of crazy. That you, right? You know, it's kind of almost cliche. Well, 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 how old were you? I mean, was it before or after you... Before. Before? Thankfully. Oh, thank right. goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Tim, because I made it big so and that's real. why I can't date. So it's real. Uh, here's what happened. You want to hear yeah, the story? I want to hear the story. Okay. Yeah. I, had been, I kept calling you champ. Do you want me to call fine. you David? You call me what you like. Okay. Uh, I had been living in New York, and then I moved to Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, she had moved to Los Angeles several years before that. She's from Kansas City. Okay. Uh, I'm from a small town in Missouri, Tipton. Okay. And so she had come back for Christmas 96, and I had gone back. I'd been living in LA, gone back for Christmas 96, heading uh, to LA again before New Year's 97. Okay. Uh, and so I'm in the gate area at the Kansas City Airport, and she's there with her brother, and her brother is always overly familiar. So I'm walking through the airport, and he goes, Dave! Like he knows me. I'm like, hi. And I'm thinking, how do I know this guy? And my wife says, she's like, how does Pat know this guy? Yeah. And so he starts chatting. I'd been on Saturday Night Live, so he's talking about that and all that stuff. So well, I did, he recognized yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. So I went and sat down at, in the, at the gate area, and then she plops down beside me. I thought, oh. She goes, oh, hey, my brother said I should invite you my, to my New Year's Eve party. I thought, oh, great. That's I thought it was his girlfriend. So she and I and started so you chatting. you already thought she was cute. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, she is. Yeah, you're uh, already checking her out. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so she starts talking about her New Year's Eve party, blah, blah, says her brother, blah, all this other stuff. She's from a family of six kids. I'm from a family of six kids. Wow. Uh, she tells me it doesn't bother her that I've had a stroke because... I'm like, well, I haven't had a stroke. You know, my lip pulls down. Oh, no. On the right side of my face, it always pulls down. Oh, and that's I didn't just, even know that. Was this, my grandmother had the same thing. And she said it doesn't bother yeah, me that you had a stroke. I, I, I said, you know what, <laughs> I'm glad, but I, I've not had a stroke. Oh, um, shoot. So we're joking around, and then they, we get on the plane. It's Vanguard, which is like Southwest. There's no seat assignments. I was literally the last person on the plane, and they, they were calling me back to sit with them. I'm like, oh, you know, people that know you from television, but she was so attractive. I'm like, I gotta go back there. Wow. So she and I are, are flirting right away, and her brother's sitting in the middle. And about halfway through the flight, Pat Morgan goes, Dave, are you attracted to my sister? Because, Lee, I think you've met your match. Dave, I think you're going to be around for a long time. That actually came out of his mouth. No! So I reached over, and I think I touched her knee. I said, what do you think, honey? And she says to this day, she was thinking, I know he's going to be around for a long time. No! That guy's my husband. So, Stop! Yep. She oh my God, me, you're going to make me cry. Yeah, she gave me a ride home from the airport that night, and I'm joking around. I go, we're probably going to have a dinner there, we'll eat there. She's thinking, I know, because we're getting married. Stop! So I went to her, I think I called her the next day. I may have sent flowers? I can't and remember. And she didn't think, like, she didn't, 
you didn't think, oh, she might really just be a fan. Like, no, no. Her brother it, is. Like, no, what? no. Once you, no? once you know her, there's she's she can't be anything but genuine. Yeah, yeah. Um, she has the she has an inability to lie. Yeah. Or, or be less than truthful. I mean, sometimes wow. she's very truthful. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> a little too truthful. A little too so, truthful. which is great. Which is great. <laughs> um, so, wow. I can say this: so, we've literally been together since the moment we met. Wow. Yeah. And how long is that? Fifteen years. Oh my. Yeah. Gosh! So, did you literally know the second you met her? I'm a guy, so no. No, yeah, that was a good answer. But, but she did. Here's but she the did. thing. So, I mean, she was ready to get married right then. So, anytime we'd go away to trips, like I think within three months, we went back to either a wedding or a reunion or something to to, to Kansas City, and all of her girlfriends were like, "You're gonna come back with a ring." You're going to come back with a ring. And I, I'm a guy. I had no idea. So it was always a little frosty on the return trip home. Like, she was mad. I'm like, why is this woman mad? Oh, we had a great trip. How long did she, you date before you proposed? <laughs> nine months. Oh, wow. Which is you still really short. Knew. Which is still short. That's super short. But it was way too long for her. Wow. <laughs> so she had her mind made up. She knew. It was like, get on with it. We're going to get married. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have kids? Five of them, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And you live in LA? Live in still, Los obviously. Angeles. Yep. So with five kids and a beautiful wife mm -hmm. and Anchorman 2 coming out, yeah. you've got you've got everything going on for you. Yeah, we got and, it. It's and not quiet in my house. What would you say about Anchorman 2 for the biggest fan out there and like you know what what to expect and is, is it I mean is it what are your thoughts on it? How did everything go and what are your thoughts on it? Uh, everything went great. Yeah. Uh, there's more movie than we could put out. You won't be disappointed. You always know that's you'll a good be, sign. Yeah. The trailer was ridiculously hilarious. Right, good, yeah. Because, you know, people get nervous. Oh, well, if it's going to oh, be yeah. two, is it going to still be funny? Right. It's not a retread. It, yeah. There's, there's plenty of the, fresh comedy. The trailer it's, didn't look like it was a retread. It's great. Yeah. Honestly, I had so much fun. And I, it was great because every day before I went to work, I would remind myself just enjoy this. Be here. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It was great. And is there improv or do you guys yeah. have to stick to a script? Oh, no. There's a no. lot of improv. No. So what we do is we'll always do a couple passes of what's scripted. Okay. And then you can throw in something and you're just offering an alternative line of dialogue. You're not going to improvise a scene because it's, you know, you've got a structure you have to sure, adhere to. Sure, sure, sure. So, but Adam McKay would be on the microphone, the director and right. also writer. And he put speakers near the set to save time rather than going back and forth. Sure. He would just throw out lines. Oh, I and love so it. He would throw out lines for every character in the movie. And Jeez. not one. He's really, is he a, he's amazing. He's genius, yeah. He's got a, yeah, he is. Sounds I, like it. I don't ever say genius, but McKay is. He is, yeah, Guess wow. who's just getting up? Get him. He's getting up. Aren't you going <laughs> to yell at him? Oh, sorry, I think the food's here. I love it when you, oh, the food's here. Chan's more important My than favorite food. part of this show Chan's more important than the food. My favorite part of the show is when you get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, Chan, the thing is, Chan, he is, he is my gay best friend who's actually straight <laughs> that I've always wanted and never had. Oh, my God. And I'm God. in love with him. And he, we're hashtag, what are we, hashtag? Hashtag twinsies. And hashtag? Hashtag besties. That's us. So, I mean, yeah. I don't really get mad at him, but I get mad at him, but I'm not really mad at him because oh I'm in love my. with him. He's, do you see how he's the best ever? Look yes. Immediately, when I, upon meeting he's him, just, I thought, he's on well, it. he's the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a couple more questions. With the champ character, when they approached you with it, did you come up with, like, that, the accent you kind of put on? Is it kind of... I, mean, I guess how did I that did. Come about? Uh, well, it, it's the script. You just yeah. So you, you just kind of right. And you, I've known Adam and Will for a long time, and they didn't approach me. I auditioned for the first. Oh, song, really? Just okay. like everybody else in town. Oh, because sure. This was ten years ago. Yeah. Um, everybody was auditioning. And so, so you thought it just I'm happened. gonna. So did, when you auditioned, you're like, I'm gonna audition with this voice. I I. Didn't, it's not about a voice. It's, not a voice. it's more about the character. Um, putting together what you think fits with what's written. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think like here's a voice I'm going to use for this. <laughs> so why not? That's a really good. Voice. Yeah, I just the when you read it, the guy's got so much conflict going on inside of him. I guess that's why it comes out that way. Yeah. He's. But when you auditioned, mm -hmm. did you audition with that voice? I, I guess. They're, they yeah. have the tapes, I think, on the uh, one of the extended versions of the first 
DVD. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's I, audition I'm is I'm going to be there. honest. I fully expected that that's how you just really talked. And now that I'm seeing you don't, I'm like, holy cow. He put that on? Yeah. The cowboy accent? Because it's awesome. <laughs> just when I thought you couldn't get more talented. There you go. <laughs> you go and show me that. I mean, wow. Yeah. But no, it really is, that is, really is cool. And then also, in terms of uh, like doing the movie, who's like the funniest person on set? I mean, is there someone who you're really close with on set, or? Well, we're all we're all friends. Yeah. Uh, I've known Steve the longest. Steve uh, Corral. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. his wife, and I were in a company at Second City, and then she and I were hired uh, to Saturday Night Live in the same time. So, but we're not necessarily. There's not a, you know, when you get older, you don't have uh, who's your best friend like. Oh, you don't. Have a, who's your best? Oh, me either. <laughs> You two are best friends. Yeah, he is. Hashtag besties. Um, my daughter will often ask, who's your best friend, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have best friends. <laughs> I have a ton of very close friends. Yeah. Um, but no, we all get along. And th mm -hmm. these guys are all truly remarkable gentlemen. Yeah. They are as their family men. They're great husbands. They That's everyone, good. Yeah, er, honestly. I tell people this. They're as good a people as you hope. Yeah. As you would expect, yeah. right. But on set, no one's trying to outdo each other. Right, right On right. set, everyone is trying to do the best job they can. That's what's which up. I, which I think really might be the signature thing for the film and why people keep coming back to it. Because um, when you're doing the show, as you mentioned, we, you know, we improvise quite a bit, so you kind of tune your brain a little, I don't want to say harder, but you have to really listen. Be, yeah. Because uh, if... If you were lazy and you're doing a scene, you could go, uh-huh, you're saying your line, and now it's my line. Yeah. But if you're improvising, you're really you be listening. Honest. Yeah, I think You'd there might honest. be a little bit different chemical reaction that happens. And how many takes is it? I mean, if you're doing, um, I'm like literally soaking up every minute I have with you. We're about to, have to go on air with you. Okay. Listen to the podcast, because you're going to want to hear more from, from Champ. Really, this is the Champ. Good, this is the good stuff. Champ! <laughs> That's my impression of you. <laughs> Champ! <laughs> was that good? <laughs> that was pretty good. good, right? Yes, but you were in the middle of a question. Oh, what was I going to ask? Dang it! Something shiny. Oh um, what were we just talking about? Anger Man? What, was, it? what, were, what was the last thing we were talking about? Andy? Oh, Anybody? your accent and, and how you get yeah, oh, who's the funniest, funniest on set. Well, and... Will's the funniest, I think, because the, the Ron thing just kills me. Honestly, because here's the thing, you know, even if you know what's going to happen, and but you don't know how he's going to say it, Will. Oh, I remember I was going to ask. It'll, yeah. It's the way he just does his right. thing, then he dips it down. No, of course. And he looks at you and you're like, oh. So how many times do you have to do a scene? This is my last question. Oh. Because the scenes are so effing brilliant, and right. I would assume with the improv and everybody working together, uh -huh. I mean, is there times where you have to do like hundred takes? Like how? Oh, not a hundred. No. 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 But, but how does? Well, now with yeah. digital technology, you don't yeah. have to worry about processing the film. Okay. So you can just keep it rolling. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so easy. We'll do a, or that we'll makes do, it easier. We'll do long scenes, long takes. And then just. But it's all one long take. You so don't you're not have to cut. really. Mm -hmm. Because because the technology's changed. Wow. Yeah, it's all about economics. So it's not like you're like take one hundred and twenty-eight. No. 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 So you might do three or four very long takes where you'd get to, and if you oh, mess, that sounds fun. yeah, and now that if you mess fun. up a line, you just take a beat and, and then, then do reset. it again. Oh, wow! Because they're doing multiple takes or multiple angles, so this oh, might so be cool. one angle, so cool. then there'll be the other one, then there'll be a wide one. So you don't, you know, if you mess up, you can just back up. Especially if it's in the two or the single, you can just keep going. Yeah, the two's my favorite angle for sure. Favorite. It's okay. just you know, it's my, it gets my good side. Uh -huh. Champ. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? Yeah, that's very that's good. That's pretty good. Thank you for coming All right, on. a pleasure. Absolutely. Right. Make sure to listen to the podcast. We're going to go interview him more. Just call him Champ, or you can call him David Keck. Call nice. him the Keck Man. Well, All right. Have a great weekend. <laughs>